हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडेज लेक्चर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ डिजाइन ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर्स इन लिमिट स्टेट ऑफ कोलैप्स अंडर लेक्चर दिस विल बी द फर्स्ट लेक्चर इन दिस सीरीज विल स्टार्ट विद दिस सो एज वी नो दैट एज स्पेसिफाइड बाय आई एस फोर फाइव सिक्स For limited method of design, we have to consider some conditions. Mainly four conditions we are considering: that limit state of collapse in flexure, limit state of collapse in shear, limit state of collapse in torsion, and limit state of collapse in compression. So, uh, let us start with uh, limit state of collapse in flexure with some assumptions. We have to consider the assumptions as specified by IS four five six under clause number thirty eight, which is provided on page number sixty nine of IS four five six two thousand. So let us discuss these assumptions one by one in detail. The reason for the limit state of collapse in flexure shall be based on the assumptions as given below. The first assumption is. That the plane sections normal to the axis remains plane after bending. It means that if you take a section normal to the axis before bending of any flexural member, that section remains plane even after that particular section is going to bend or deform. Now, how that we'll discuss with the example so that you'll get a clear idea. So let us consider one cantilever section or cantilever beam. and if this is a neutral axis and if we take a section at any instant or at any interval which is normal to the neutral axis then the section will be a plane section before bending because there is no external load on this beam so this beam is not bent that's why whatever section you will obtain that will be plane section it will not be a distorted section so suppose if this beam is subjected to external load and due to that external load the beam is deflected like this so if you draw the neutral axis that neutral axis will be also resembles the shape of the beam so as per the assumptions again if you take the section normal to the neutral axis that whatever section or you can consider here this is a section normal to the neutral axis it is tilted somehow but it is normal or perpendicular to the neutral axis so if you take the cross section at this particular interval which is normal to the neutral axis let us consider this again section as s1 so even after the bending the section remains plane it will not be a distorted section because that whatever strain which is going to happen here strain is nothing but that whatever change in length upon original length the strain varies linearly throughout the section that's why the section remains plane it will not get bent okay so that is the assumption that plane section before bending remains plane after bending which implies that the strain in concrete varies linearly the second assumption is that the maximum strain in concrete at the outermost compression fiber is taken as 0.0035 in bending for this refer a uh, figure number 21 which is shown in as 456 2000 So as per this figure, we have gone through the two values of strain. That first value of strain is zero point zero zero two, which is normally taken at the characteristic or yield point, and the strain at which the concrete uh, will get collapse. That particular value is taken as zero point zero zero three five. Okay, so this is. again specified in the assumption number 2 that the maximum strain in concrete at the outermost compression fiber is taken as 0.0035 okay 
Okay, so if means that if you plot a strain diagram of a reinforced cement concrete, then the particular fiber which is subjected to compression, that particular compressive fiber is carrying a maximum or ultimate strain of 0.0035. Then assumption number 3 says that the relationship between compressive stress distribution in concrete and strain in concrete may be assumed to be rectangular, trapezoidal, parabola or any other shape which results in the prediction of strength in substantial agreement with the test results. That the relation between stress and strain, it may be a rectangle, it may be a trapezoid, it may be a parabola or it any other shape depends upon that what are the results we are obtaining after the performing the after performing the test on that particular member or on that particular material. And in as 4, 5, 6, they have mentioned one uh, acceptable stress strain curve as shown in figure number 21, which just we have seen. So, in this figure number 21, they have mentioned the acceptable stress strain curve. We have already discussed about this curve in idealized stress strain curves. So, for the design purpose, we are considering a one curve of this. Okay. So, as we have discussed in the previous lectures also that the, this first curve what we are using, this is the idealized curve. Then the second curve which we are obtaining, this is a theoretical curve. This theoretical curve is obtained just by this assumption. That is, for the design purpose, the compressive strength of concrete in the structure shall be assumed to be 0 0.67 times the characteristic strength. Why? Because of number of uncertainties are there in actual conditions. We cannot uh, consider the, we cannot take the uh, test results or test values which we obtain in the standard conditions uh, in laboratory to the actual field condition. On actual field, there may be variations in the concrete quality, there may be variations in the quality of concrete due to the lack of workmanship and number of factors. So that's why I specified that the uh, strength of concrete may be taken as 0 0.67 times the characteristic strength. So that's why this second curve we are going to obtain and this second curve what we obtain this curve is called as a theoretical curve. So this will be the theoretical curve as we have discussed also. Now again IS456 specifies that the partial safety factor gamma m equals to 1.5 shall be applied in addition to this. So gamma 1 sorry gamma m uh, for concrete is 1.5 so that's why here you can see that the partial safety factor for concrete is applied to get the resign curve. Okay. So this curve what we are obtaining here this curve is called as a design curve and this design curve is devised from this assumption only from clause number 38. One note is mentioned in this clause that at the first stress strain curves in figure number 21, the design stress block parameters are as pillows. Now what is the design stress block? That as, I, as I told you in uh, previous lectures also, that whatever uh, design curve that we are getting, the area covered under this design curve is called as a stress block. This particular area is called as a stress block and the maximum value of stress that the concrete has to carry that will be equals to 0 0.446 FCK normally it is taken as 0.45 FCK. So the different parameters are given in this IS456 about this stress block. These parameters are like this. So this just the stress block can be represented as shown in this figure number 22 of IS456. This is the stress block. So some parameters are just like the area of stress block 
area of stress block means this area of stress block this area of stress block is taken as 0.36 fck into x now how this area is calculated that we discuss in upcoming lecture then as the top portion of concrete is subjected to compressive forces hence this compressive force is going to act at the centroid of this stress block so the distance of this uh, centroid of uh, compressive force from the extreme compression fiber that will be equals to 0.42 times xu where xu is the depth of neutral axis and fck is the characteristic strength of concrete so these are the stress block parameters as per clause number 38 of as 456 in assumptions then assumption number 4 that the tensile strength of concrete is ignored yes so as we know that the concrete is very weak in tension so that's why whenever we are going to design the rcc elements we have to neglect the tensile strength of concrete and we have to assume that all stresses all tensile stresses which are going to develop in the reinforced cement concrete are to be taken care by the reinforcement only that is the assumption here that tensile strength of concrete is ignored and or you can say that all tensile stresses are to be bear by the steel only then the fifth assumption is that the stress in reinforcement are the fifth assumption is that the stresses in reinforcement are derived from representative stress strain curve for the type of steel used for the type of steel used means and we know that the mainly two types of steels we are using first is a my steel and second is h fast pass so for these two types of steels as 456 have specified the typical curves so by using this typical curves will be able to calculate the stresses in the reinforcement so for the my steel as 456 gives a typical curve and in figure number 23b which already we have discussed in idealized stress strain curves so normally for the design purpose we are taking the para, we are taking the design value or design stress as 0.87 fy that 0.87 fy is derived from fy upon 1.15 which is uh, 1.15 is the partial safety factor for the material strength for steel okay then similarly for uh, hy st bars or cold form deform bars one more figure is given that is figure number 23a so by using this figure we'll be able to find out the stresses in the reinforcement that these the values of uh, design stress values have, have been provided here so this is the fy and uh, after applying the partial safety factor we'll get this stress amount equals to fy upon 1.15 that is equals to 0.87 fy then sixth assumption is that the maximum strain in the tension reinforcement in the section at failure shall not be less than fy upon 1.15 times es plus 0.002 now how this value is calculated so let us discuss again this with the help of the figure number 23a so as in this figure we know that Uh, they have provided the stress strain curve for the cold form deform bars so normally uh, this value is taken at 0.02 0.002 which is taken as the proof stress or proof strain value so this value is 0.002 is the proof strain so already we have discussed that the modulus of elasticity of steel can be calculated just by taking the slope of this inclined line so slope of this inclined line will be this that is we can calculate the modulus of elasticity just by taking that is e e will be equals to you can say that slope of this line that is dy by dx 
Okay. But here in our case, dy is the stress. So I can write it here. You will get the ES value. And dy is the stress and uh, dx is nothing but the horizontal value that is strain. So by using this, we'll be, we can rewrite this equation as strain will be equals to stress upon modulus of elasticity. So in our case, we are taking the stress as Fy. So that will be equals to Fy upon Es. Now, now we have to find out this value of strain at the ultimate value or you can say that at the uh, yield point value. So yield point is this point, but uh, we cannot uh, calculate this uh, corresponding strain at yield point just by drawing the line like this or it will not be equals to 0 0.004 because this is a typical graph curve shown here which is not to scale so we have to calculate this value now how to calculate this value so for this we know that up to this point the strain value which we have been given in this curve is equals to 0 0.002 now the remaining value of strain we have to calculate. So how to calculate that? So again we have to use the same relation. By using this relation that is E is equals to dy by dx or you can use E is equals to stress upon strain. So here we have derived, derived this equation that epsilon that is nothing but strain is equals to Fy upon Es. But value of Fy what we have to consider here is the design value okay so that will be equals to Fy upon 1.15 so the corresponding value uh, this value will get equals to stress value is equals to Fy upon 1.15 divided by E yes so the epsilon yes is nothing but the corresponding strain is equals to Fy upon 1.15 into Es where Es is the modulus of elasticity of steel. Now the total ultimate strain or you can say that the maximum strain in the steel can be calculated by using just addition of these two points that is 0 0.002 plus Fy upon 1.15 times Es. So you will get the ultimate strain in steel epsilon su just again if you further simplify this equation just by 1 by 1 upon 1.15 you will get the point 87 fy so we can rewrite the equation as the ultimate strain in steel will be equals to 0.87 fy upon es plus 0 0.002 so this will be the equation for the ultimate strain in the reinforcement so we have to use this equation frequently in the further parts of the chapter. So I request you may write down this equation in your notebook so that it will be helpful for you to understand and remind this value in further part of the lectures. So we'll stop here for this day. In next lecture, we'll discuss about the Concepts of under reinforce, over reinforce, and balance sections. Thank you. If you like this video, then don't forget to click on the like button. And also, if you want to get the further notifications about the videos like this, then click on the subscribe button and again click on the bell icon so that you will get the notifications of my new videos on this topic. Thank you.